Welcome to episode 9 of Going the Distance. I'm Nicholas Delgado, and I'm your host for everything to do with high school running in central Illinois. Make sure to follow on Instagram at Going the Distance IL and tune in every Wednesday for a new episode. Today we have a decent amount to talk about. Regionals, the first round of postseason, is kicked off last weekend, and sectionals are coming up. Both very important weeks for many teams across the state, so we're going to dive into that. As well as we have an interview with one of the regional champions from the area. And we also are going to be talking about all the local teams and how they're doing as I have re... Uh, what's the word? Redesigned Conference Corner. So I lied last week, I guess. We still have this segment. It's just going to be a little bit different. But first, let's start off with the previous week's meets. I'm going to go over a few regionals from the area and then... A couple more that I thought were important. So started off the 1A Eureka Regional. Normal U High wins with 29 points. Eureka right behind pulling a surprising upset over El Paso Gridley who beat them in conference. But U High won pretty convincingly. Mason Hart the junior from U High wins in 1527.56. Pretty good day for U High. Good outlook on their season as they head into the last two races. Next, it shows the 2A Peoria Notre Dame Regional. Morton wins that with 33 points over Peoria Notre Dame. Josh Weeks, the junior from Morton, wins in 1630.9. This was a full 5K, and Donovan is not a fun course to run. So, good job to Josh on his 45 second win there. You can actually see a full live stream of that race on my Instagram at Going the Distance IL. I was there. I have it all on live stream. So go check that out if you have time. I definitely recommend it. It was fun to record, so I try to commentate a little bit through it as the runners are passing. Next, I chose the 2A Belvedere Regional. Belvedere North wins with 51 points over Crystal Lake. Prairie Ridge with 54 points. A really tight one there. Evan Horgan, the senior Belvedere North, wins the race in 1457.13, which definitely propelled Belvedere North to the victory there as they move on to sectionals. Well, both teams move on to sectionals, and they'll face even tougher competition, as we'll see in a second. Next regional is the 2A Darien Hizil South Regional. Riverside Brookfield comes through and destroys that with 23 points. Cooper Mars, the junior of Riverside Brookfield, wins that race in 1519.05. Pretty easy day for Brookfield, I would say. Brady Norman still not at full strength, and they still just cleaned house there, so good job to them. Next up, the 2A Sterling Regional. Glenbard South wins with 62 points, just over Maple Park Keeneland with 77 points. The junior of Sterling, Dale Johnson, wins at 15-12.5 over Evan Nosek, the sophomore from Caneland at 15-22.6. Solid 10 second win by Dale Johnson. And I think, I don't want to, I don't know, I feel like I haven't heard a lot about Evan Nosek in a while, so nice to see him back up there, low 15s. And finally, I covered the 3A Quincy Regional where Pekin was at. O'Fallon wins with 20 points, and Dylan Yabera, I think is how you say it. The junior of O'Fallon wins the race, 1549.8, only person sub-16. Now, let's move into some individual performances from this past week. The weekly top times from the whole state. In 1A, we had Ethan Hogan, the junior of Columbia, running a 1458.4. He ran that at the Trenton Regional on Saturday. In 2A, the junior from Marion gets it once again. Dylan Nally runs a 1435.3 at the Highland Regional. And for 3A, from Plainfield North, somebody you might not have heard of before, Oliver Burns, the senior. He runs a 1451.7 at the Manuka Regional. Great win by him. Plainfield South's Cameron Vigier and his crew all did not. They, are, they ran as a pack. They all came in within like point seven seconds of each other so i'm assuming that's what they were doing but plainfield south destroyed that regional but that wasn't the point of what i was talking about good job to oliver burns um runner of the week locally this week i chose sam springer the junior of delavan 
he had a pretty good week. To, uh, I, this probably wasn't the best week to highlight him. He has won some meets where I could have highlighted in the past, but I think he still had an exceptional performance this week, and it was about, about time I covered him on this podcast. So I'm putting him in now. So he got second place in the Porto 1A Regional. He ran without his full team because they, I don't think they had five runners to score. So he could only he went into it knowing he could only call individually. And he ran a 15.54, only losing to a 15.50. So great race by him. He's got the, a lot of potential to drop some great time heading into state, too, because it was really hot, not ideal weather for racing this past Saturday. So congratulations to Sam Springer of Delavan. Statewide, I chose Evan Horgan, the senior from Belvedere North. He won the 2A Belvedere Regional in 1457.13. It's his first time under 15, so congratulations to him, especially since it was on a course that was not that wily. He led his team to win by three points, which is one of the reasons I think he definitely deserved a state runner of the league, just because of how impactful his performance was that day. And he ran under 15 without ideal racing weather still. Really impressive. 1457, I expect to see a lot of good stuff out of him as we move on to sectionals and state. Now moving on to conference corner, I've redesigned this a little bit. So what I'm gonna go do, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go through uh, the three conferences that I've been going over. I'm gonna talk about each of the teams and how they've done in the posting races at the route. That'll be the last time you hear them for the year. But I will follow their individuals if they individual qualify. So it'll kind of we'll see how this goes. But let's start off with middle line. Eye. So seven of the middle line eye teams all raced at the Peoria Notre Dame Regional. At Donovan Park. East Peoria placed 6th. Dunlap placed 4th. Washington placed 3rd. Metamora placed 5th. And Morton won the regional. All those teams were in the top 6 that they're going to be advancing. Canton and Limestone sadly did not qualify. Canton did not have a full team. Limestone placed ninth, I think. Lime- so the individual qualifiers though. Clayton Bell, the senior and Jackson Manley, the sophomore of Limestone, both individually qualified. So we will still be following Limestone, and we'll also still be following Canton, because Zach Ligenfelter, the junior of Canton, also individually qualified. So congratulations to everybody there. We have one, at least one person out of every team in the middle line I that was at that regional represented. And as you can see, we also have an individual from P or two individuals from Pekin, who sadly did not make it out of the regional. They were only seven points off of qualifying as a team, but they have two individuals to represent them in the th- that are coming out of the 3A Quincy Regional and into the 3A Normal Community Sectional. The individual qualifiers, Devin Hayes, the sophomore of Pekin, and Josh Holloway, who we've had on the podcast, the junior of Pekin, both representing the Saturday at Normal Community Sectional. Moving on to the HOI Conference. For team-wise, Tremont placed 14th at the regional, Fieldcrest placed 13th, Tri-Valley placed 10th, Deer Creek Mackinac placed 9th, Hayworth 5th, El Paso Goodly 3rd, and Eureka 2nd. So the whole conference was in the Eureka 1A regional, but the only three teams to make it out were Eureka, El Paso, and Hayworth. So congratulations to those three. But individually, Caleb Krishel, the sophomore Fieldcrest makes it out of the regional, so we will keep following him. And Ryan Kuhn, the sophomore of Deer Creek, uh, Deer Creek Mackinac, also made it out of the regional and will be advancing to the sectional along with those teams. So we'll be covering those two individuals as the season keeps going until they are either eliminated or the season's over. And finally, the Big 12. Pure, um, so in the PND regional, Three of those teams were represented. Peoria High did not have a full team, so they did not finish. PR Richwoods placed eighth, and PR Notre Dame placed second in the 2A PND regional. Um, individually, nobody qualified, so just PN, just Notre Dame, the team, is who makes it out of those three. Next team I want to talk about is Peoria Manual. They did not have, a, they did not even race in the 1A Eureka regional. However, that is where they would have been. I don't know if they just didn't have enough people or what happened, but they did not run that race. So that is the end of the season for them. Next up at the 2A Richland County Regional, we have Danville, who plays ninth, Champaign Centennial, who plays seventh, who was so close to qualifying. 
Urbana, who plays third, and Champagne Central, who plays second. Now, even though Danville and Champagne Centennial didn't qualify, they did send some individuals. Phil Andre Pache- Pacheco, the freshman of Danville, freshman individually qualifying for sectionals, good job to him. Jose Bouchelain, the senior, Josh Hooper, the junior, and Aaron Hendren, the senior of Champagne Centennial, also all move on. Aaron Hendren being the individual regional champion, so congratulations to him. Also important to note, Champagne Central did not win the regional, but they also did not run with their freshman star, Caleb Mathias, at the front again. I don't know what's up with that, but I guess hopefully he'll be back soon. Now there's only a few other teams that we haven't covered. One of these teams is Normal Community, who plays fourth in the 3A Quincy Regional, and will be moving on to the Normal Community Sectional. And finally, at the Taylorville Regional for 2A, the last two teams of the conference were represented. Normal Community West, who got third, and Bloomington, who got ninth. Bloomington did not qualify as a team, but David Humphreys, a sophomore of Bloomington, will move on without them. Good luck to all the individuals and teams locally who will be competing in the next round of the postseason. But now, let's talk to last week's Peoria Notre Dame regional winner, Josh Weeks, who ended up gapping the field by about 45 seconds after the first mile. I have Josh Weeks, the top runner from the Morton Cross Country team, on today. How are you doing, Josh? I'm doing good, Nicholas. How about you, man? I'm doing great. So, Josh just previously, this past week, he just won regionals at the Peoria Notre Dame Regional over the 5K course at Donovan Park. So I had a few questions for you as you like you had a great race this past weekend. So when you first thing I wanted to ask is when you run with the team up at the front, <clears throat> I noticed that you tried a different strategy this week. I feel like you guys stayed together through the first mile. Um is that something you guys talked about beforehand? Yeah. Um our coach wanted us to stick together for the first mile because it was a unusual hotter day to race, and he didn't want us using all our energy on the hills at Donovan for the first mile with it being pretty hot. Yeah, definitely. I know that course is pretty rough. I've run it before, and just seeing it, everybody out there the other day, it's just a very tough course. So, But throughout the last two miles, you opened up a gap of about 45 seconds on the second place. Um, how, when did you start to notice that that gap was forming? Um, it was about the two mile after that big hill, I looked back and I was kind of surprised at how big of a gap it was, but I just told myself I had to keep on moving. Yeah. So is that, is this something you guys are going to try to do this upcoming Saturday, the metamore section, or are you guys going to try to stick together as a team through the first mile and then just whatever happens, you're just going to go out there and run with the top? Or do you think you're going to go out originally and just try to run with the front runner? Because I think there's going to be a few new front runners in this race. Yeah, definitely. I think I'll try to go and run with the top runners because that will get me prepared for state competition yeah definitely i think that is a very smart plan especially since the weather is going to be much nicer this saturday than it was this past weekend so looking ahead for the rest of the postseason who's your biggest competitors individually and as a team do you see for yourself um going into this weekend uh this weekend and next weekend yeah so this weekend i think I hope we win. I think there's like a guy seated at 15-10 or 15-20 that's going to be up by me. And so that would be a strategic race. I'm going to have to race. Um, And then team-wise, I think we're supposed to finish first. Um... And then going into next weekend, which is state, it's just, it's crazy. It's already here. We've just been training for it this whole summer, and I think we're ready for it. We're we're at our uh, peak performance right now and looking forward to just cruising through it. Yeah, so 
obviously you guys are getting in shape. I'm assuming one of your goals you have for this Saturday is to pick up another title. You already got regionals. I'm assuming you'd like to do sectional title. Yeah, for sure. That's that's been our goals. And then heading into state, what are you looking at right now? Top five, probably. Hopefully, um, I'm hoping to go top ten for sure. Um, there's anything can happen at state though, with like, as far as guys having the best races of their life, dropping like 30 seconds. Um, I'm just gonna try to perform my best and give it all I got for the team. Yeah, that's a great way to think about it. Just a couple more questions. One of them, do you, after high school, I know you're just a junior, and I don't know how much you've thought about this, but do you plan to run in college? Yeah, I probably will. Do you have any specific know. place in mind? I don't know where yet. Um, I'm, just, I'm just waiting to see after the season what happens. Yeah, that sounds good because you still have a whole other cross season and then two full track seasons. So you got a lot of time. I was just something that I was curious about. I'm sure a lot of other people were as well. Um, one final thing, just do you? Well, for actually two things. Do you have like any like pre race things you do that just like help you get in the right mindset? Uh, I drink a lot of water, and my go-to food before races is trail mix and that just really fuels me um say the night before i like spaghetti and i just like think about my race on the bus ride there and yeah just see what i can do yeah that's awesome and then Finally, just when you when you finish the the like the race and everything, you get your medal. It's obviously great, but when you, the rest of the team with, comes with you and gets to hold up that trophy, how does it, how does it feel to be surrounded with other people that are like helping you win that title? It's not just like an individual thing for you. Like you have a whole team supporting you. Yeah, that's definitely. Um, it's nice to have that team there because they encourage you, even on days where I don't feel like going and running the team's there to motivate each other and hold each other accountable and it's really nice to have that there's a community of us boys that are going to work every day and going to battle every saturday with the racing all right yeah thank you so much for coming on i appreciate your time and um good luck to you on saturday and these upcoming weekends thanks man once again, I just want to say thank you to Josh for coming on. It was great talking to him and learning more about how he feels when he races and just some plans that he has coming up. I have a couple more ideas on having a few more, having him on a few more times depending on how his season goes, but we'll see what happens. But now let's move into the weekly outlook. Here I'm going to cover all the sectionals or just kind of give a little preview of what I can or of what I know. So starting with 1A, the Benton sectional. Top two teams that I saw coming out of there, Benton and Pinkney, Pinkyville. Um, this is a very important matchup because we have um, Isaac Teal from Pinkneyville and we have Gavin Geneseo from Benton. Two very good 2A, or 1A runners that will be competing in sectionals. So before state, I don't know, have we seen that? I don't think we've seen them compete this year. So we'll see what happens. Good luck to both of them. Next, the Elgin Harvest Christian Academy sectional. Aurora Central Catholic, the Paul College Prep, both going to be there, both strong. Chicago Latin, and then obviously Harvest Christian Academy. That should be a pretty strong 1A sectional. Uh, 1A does it differently from 2A and 3A. Like They have five sectionals, so I think less teams qualify out. I think only six qualify. So better competition up there. Next up, we have the Elmwood sectional. This is more local, El Paso Gridley, Elmwood, Eureka, Normal UI, all going to be going for that title. It's, so it's really just the Eureka Regional plus Elmwood for top teams. So good luck to everybody there. That should be a fun one at the top. We got Sam Busher, um, Charlie Bardwell, Isaiah Hill, Mason Hart, all going to be competing for that individual title as well as we move on to sectionals and then 
they'll be going out at its state again the next week at Detweiler. Next up, the Oregon sectional. Riverdale and Pon- uh, Port Byron, Rivendale, Riverdale, and Pontiac are the two top teams that I saw coming out of that region or coming into that sectional. So we'll see who can take the sectional title there. And finally, for 1A, St. Joseph Ogden, Decatur St. Teresa, and Tuscola, both going to be going for that title section in the sectional. Tuscola trying to compete with their two top runners. We'll see how that goes. St. Joseph Ogden had a really fast course at their invite earlier this year. We'll see how it does coming up this weekend with the weather and everything. Moving on to 2A, the Chatham-Glenwood sectional. I picked out five teams that were pretty strong. Civic Memorial, going to be out there, putting on a good show. Champaign Central, we'll see if they can bring back their star freshman, but they still have a shot anyways. Lincoln with Brendan Heitzig, Marion with Dylan Nally, and Normal Community West with Sky Riddle. All super good teams, all going to be competing for that sectional title at Glenwood. We'll see how that plays out. Moving on to Deerfield, a couple strong regionals feeding in there. We have Chicago Mather and Chicago Payton. Grays Lake Central and Deerfield all going to be there in Vernon Hills. Now, obviously, Miles Foot has ranked Grays Lake Central 1 for since the beginning of the season. So we'll see if they can prove that. <clears throat> Next up, Maple Park Caneland sectional. Belvedere North and Crystal Lake Prairie Ridge are going to be competing again, like I said earlier, but they will combine with Glenbard South, Maple Park Caneland, Oak Park Fenwick, and Riverside Brookfield. This is going to be a stacked sectional. Definitely be looking at the results for this one. This will tell us a lot as we move into the final week going into state. Lots of strong teams. Everybody's going to be competing for that title. Teams to watch, Brookfield, Belvedere North. Or actually, just watch all of them. It's going to be a crazy day. <clears throat> Finally for 2A, the Metamora sectional. There we have basically the Peoria Notre Dame Regional. Morton, Dunlap. Notre Dame, Washington, and then Geneseo, the regional champions from the Geneseo Regional. They're going to be competing up there at the top. A couple more individuals thrown in at the top as well, but overall it should be a pretty identical race to the Pure Notre Dame Regional. But good luck to everyone in the area because that is the like region, the, the local sectional. And finally, moving on to the 3A section. The Wabanese Valley sectional in Aurora, Downers Grove North, Hinsdale Central, Naperville Nickel Valley, and Oak Park River Forest, and Orland Park Sandburg. Really stacked field right there, all going to be competing for that sectional title. I don't really know exactly who's supposed to make it at, who's supposed to win, I think Hinsdale Central, but I'm not too sure. Next up, the Hoffman Estate sectional, Gurney Warren, Palatine, and Winnetka New Trier. All super strong schools going to be competing for that title. Palatine with got a really strong team. I know we raced them, but so do the other two schools. So we'll be watching that to see how they perform as we go into this last week of state. The normal community sectional is the local sectional for 3A. Edwardsville, Manuka, Normal Community, O'Fallon, Oswego East, and Plainfield South. So a lot of teams coming up and down, and then normal community stand right at home there. Plainfield South, expect them to put on a show, especially to get prep for state. They ran like together as a pack last week, but expect them to run really fast this week. Finally, the Lake Park sectional. DeKalb, St. Ignatius, and Wheaton Warrenville South all are going to be competing for that title. Definitely keep your eye on St. Ignatius. They always have a good program, but Riley Newport and DeKalb could put on a show as well. So today we talked about all the regional rundowns from last week and some sectional predictions. I want to thank everybody for listening this week. Make sure to tune back in next Wednesday for episode 10. And it'll be a state preview, so you won't want to miss that. Hopefully we'll get a good interview in there as well. I want to thank Josh Weeks for coming on again. It was a great interview. Make sure to follow on Instagram at GoingTheDistanceIL. And tune in next Wednesday. Thank you for listening once again. I'll see you next week.